intelligence through Dr. Tim, Tim Elmore in Atlanta, and, and we do um, emotional intelligence um, training with our guys on a fairly regular basis where where we're talking about how um, how to handle um, the the stresses of not ju- not just what golf does to you, but uh, the schoolwork and and everything in a young adult's life. The there's that part of it, and then there's also the um, you know the 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 more particular uh, pieces of it as it applies to um, like I'll give you an example. I've got a player uh, that that won in the fall and, and was real close to winning a couple times as a freshman last year, but he just would freak out on the back nine whenever he would get in contention. And, and this, there's like this roadblock with him um, to, to winning in college. And we broke through in the fall and it, and it, a lot of that was, was just the mental, mental stuff and how you handle being in contention on the back nine and that kind of thing. And then, um, you know, it, it's, that's, that's really a, a key, key part of, of what I think has helped our, our been, been a, a really strong part of our program is, is addressing those things. And then we brought in uh, Bob Rotella for years and we brought in some other sports psychologists to work with the guys and, and girls. So it's a, it's a huge part of what we do. What do you think the golf oh, ball is going to do by shortening the golf ball? Hmm. Well, um, I wish they would just shorten the tee, to be honest with you. I think I wish they would try that first. I think if you would just limit how high you could tee a ball up, um, I'd like to see people play. Interesting. Um, from off the ground or pretty close. I'd like that's been my um, I, I think if you if you limited how high you can tee a ball up, I think you'd see spin come back into the game and. Um, you wouldn't be able to quite max out, hit up on um, drivers, you know, this hitting five up on drivers and maxing out, things like that. I think it would take that out. and um, That's what I would like to see done first with the current equipment and, and ball that we have is just make people play. I mean, let them tee it up, but, but a tee, tee could only be basically like a, a part three tee. Wow, that's that's a really interesting take on that. Isn't that, isn't and, that um, yeah, that's a pretty good idea. Yeah, that's a sure pretty is. good it's idea. Great... I hadn't thought of that one. Well, just think about how how good you have to be to hit a driver off the deck, and what it would do. I'm sure. I'm sure the way these guys are with the technology, they'd figure out some way to hit it 350 off the ground. But I'd like to see them try. Um, you know, I, I just think. I think it would. Uh, I think it would bring bring shot making back into the game a little bit more, and and um, it'd be a hell of a lot cheaper to make make a, a shorter tee than to go retool yep. all the golf ball plants. Yep. Oh, you got that right. I know but, a lot of guys in Europe, but this is back in the seventies when I used to play. They they they'd hit a driver off the deck on the second shot of a par five because they felt like the ball couldn't go left. You just couldn't hit it left off the deck. Period. You know, you'd hit a little squirt or left mm-hmm. or right or, you know, and, and uh, you got a point. I mean, there's no way you're going to hit it as far. You got Darren preaching, which which I agree with him, using a four-inch tee and then hitting it on the upswing, and then you could lower the loft on the golf club. And so you take all that out of play. That's, that's a good yep. idea. You're a smart mm-hmm. man. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't know about that, but I, I've uh, I'm at least got, got opinions. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've done, whether they're good ones or not i don't know you've done a lot of good things and i tell you what being a coach at a college like you are you know one thing is getting kids to play better golf and what have you but you know uh, just some of the things you said about trying to make them better human beings and and uh whether they take their hat off when they go inside and whatever you know preparing some of these young people for life is probably more important you know and a coach maybe has as much influence if not more than their own parents in a lot of ways and uh, uh that's that's a very noble thing to be doing well, it, it you, thank you, but um, yeah, you still have to play well or you get fired. But it's uh, <laughs> it's it's definitely oh. <laughs> definitely been one of the things that that I I want to I want them to have fun. I want them to grow. Um, I want it to be an incredible experience for them. I want them to have teammates and 
friendships, relationships that I'm getting, you know, I can get all sentimental about that stuff, but, um, it, it is, it is really a big part of what we try to do. You have any other questions? Well, we've had a, no, we've had a great experience with you, Bill. Thanks so much for your time. I'd like really to give a Bill, this is Paul Belmont. Go ahead, I'd like Paul. To give a shout out. I, I'm South Carolina class of '73. Oh, I was a walk on. Oh, great. I was walk on basketball when we were number one in the country, back with Manning and Roach and Tommy Owens. Oh yeah, and Bobby Crimmins, who you may know from Georgia Tech. And no, Coach uh, Crimmins very well. Yes. Yeah. You know, I'm six four and Bobby used to stand next to me and Bobby's about ah, he's maybe six foot five eleven. Who me? His hand would go his hand no. went eight inches over mine. Oh, not me. Eight inches. <laughs> eight inches over mine. And he was four inches shorter. But I had a question uh, for you. I was a walk on. I wasn't one of the star players. Do you have walk ons in uh college golf or is it all recruit and scholarship well i've had i've had some invited walk-ons it, it's tough for us we have a, a title nine roster limitation of 10 players and so mm -hmm. when you do the math that's two to three players recruited players for me typically per class that i sign okay and okay occasionally i'll have a player transfer or Something unquiet, and I'll have maybe have a spot open up, and I've had what I call some invited walk-ons, um, some late late guys that maybe are coming to Carolina just because they want to be here and, and and are good players. I've had a couple of those. I've had one walk-on qualifier um, since I've been coaching here. The 14 years I've been at Carolina, I've had one open walk-on qualifier, and you get a kick out of this. The best it was four rounds, I think, and the player that was leading it. You know how hot it gets in Columbia, and we were in August, and we I had them I had them doing a 36 hole, um, uh, final round, final two rounds for this one spot, and this kid was by far the best player of the four or five that were left, and he he walked the first 18, ate his sandwich, handed me his card, and he said, Coach, I'm out, I can't do this, <laughs> and so it was that was the one open qualifier I've had, but. It's tough for us with only ten, um, and mm -hmm. and that's a Title Nine number that we don't have control over, is is the bottom line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good. Yeah, they had the same problem at VMI. They lost their uh, men's golf coach, uh, golf school, or golf golf team, uh, because of the Title Nine money. You know, they they didn't have another female team or something to to match up to it. Mm -hmm. So I told the told coach yeah. down there, I said, look, I tell you what we can do. I can coach the men's golf team. And then what I'll do is put together a girls rowing team for you. Put them in a boat just outside of Havana and tell them it's 90 miles. Start rowing. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be national champs by the time I get there. What am I going to tell you that? <laughs> oh, well, I, I will say that Bobby Crimmins is, is, uh, has a special place in my heart. He helped me uh, navigate that calculus at Georgia Tech. He was a big. He's a big golfer, loved loved the game, and um, and he helped me get a tutor that helped get me through the pre calculus classes at Tech. I'll always have a soft spot for Bobby. He's a he's a really great, well rounded individual. He was one of the few guys on the team who had real brains and overall talent. And uh, and I don't know if you knew Casey Manning. He used to do some of the games. Yeah. There. Casey was my roommate mm -hmm. for three years. He was the first black basketball player at South Carolina. And great yeah. guy. I was best man in his wedding. And uh, um, who else? Did... Alex English is still down there in Columbia, I think. Mm -hmm. Skip He's Harlicka, from... was he around back then? Or was he a little uh, older? I knew, Skip. I knew Skip was before me. I was late sixties, early seventies. Skip was before me, okay. but uh, okay, it was a great experience. I had uh, unbelievable, you know, unbelievable. Yeah. The, uh, so, all right, Coach, we really appreciate, well, appreciate you coming you saying, on. Hey, and uh, Coach McGuire wasn't as sweet as you were. He used to t talk about our mothers quite often in ways that we had never heard. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs>
Well, Bobby, uh, Darren, and everybody, thanks for having me on. And uh, I really appreciate y'all asking me to do this. No, it's, it's our pleasure. Oh, it's our honor. And uh, Yeah, absolutely. We'll send you the video. Okay, thank you. And I'm going to be in Myrtle Beach. Hello, did it go away? Oh, crap.